what's good it's Wug. we've got a pretty awesome undercard fight to anthony joshua versus francis Ngannou. that co-main event if you will the second fight down is Zhili zhang 26 wins one loss and one draw taking on joseph parker 34 wins and three losses Joseph Parker is a former WBO champ. He was actually the first and for a while, the only person to have beaten Andy Ruiz until Andy Ruiz would eventually lose in that rematch against Anthony Joshua. Still one of Joseph Parker's most meaningful and best wins uh, to date. Joseph Parker also defended that belt a couple times successfully, one of which was against Huey Fury. And then he lost the title in a unification bout against Anthony Joshua. That was Joseph Parker's first career loss. That was also the first time Anthony Joshua was brought the 12 round distance. So Parker's the first to take Joshua the distance. And then Joseph Parker lost in his very next fight actually against Dillian White. And that was a very close and competitive fight. That was one of the more frustrating Joseph Parker fights to watch because I got the impression that he was just too slow out of the gate. He was too willing to touch gloves, whereas Dillian White was more aggressive, just more urgent, just seemed like he wanted it more. That fight also featured a couple of knockdowns, but I look at that fight as being the one where Joseph Parker's resume would look so much better if he won that Dillian White fight. Because I, I do think that that is a fight that Parker, ability-wise, could have and probably should have won, but I don't want to take anything away from Dillian White. Joseph Parker finished strong in that fight. He basically had White holding on, but White ended up winning a unanimous decision. Parker then went on to win his next six fights. The fifth and sixth of those six fights were back-to-backs against Derek Jasor. The first one was razor close, a split decision win for Parker. Many thought that Derek Jasor deserved that decision win, and Jasora actually knocked Parker down like in the first 10 seconds of that fight. Parker looked a lot better in the rematch. He pretty much won handedly, and he put a beating on Chisora in that rematch. And then Parker fought Joe Joyce. That was a pretty brutal fight. Joe Joyce was like a 40 pounds or so heavier than Joseph Parker, and the writing was on the wall. Joseph Parker was hitting, you know, Joe Joyce with a lot of his best stuff. Joe Joyce earned the nickname, you know, or proved that he was worthy of that nickname, the Juggernaut, in the way that he was eating Parker's shots, continuing to march him down, eventually knocking Joseph Parker out. And, you know, you just watch that fight, and you're like, man, this is just getting worse and worse for Parker because he just couldn't do anything to really phase Joe Joyce. And again, Joe Joyce starts to roll downhill with more activity, and he almost seems indestructible at a point. Joseph Parker was just on the wrong end of that one. And at that point, I kind of thought that Joseph Parker was done as an elite or near elite fighter. I thought that I never thought that he would get another huge opportunity or have a win in his future that you could argue is his best win. Well, he wins his next three fights against lesser opponents. That's usually what Joseph Parker would often do after a loss. Like after the Dillian White loss, he fought uh, Alex Leopold, Alexander Flores, Shondell Winters. Well, Joseph Parker won his next three fights then fights Deontay Wilder in that day of reckoning. And I remember suggesting when a lot of people thought that Otto Valin was going to have a good chance at upsetting Anthony Joshua, I'm thinking, no, he won't. Like, there was no, I, I couldn't envision Otto Valin like, outboxing Anthony Joshua through 12 rounds, even if he is a southpaw like Usyk. Otto Valin is not Usyk. And I'm thinking, at just about every box you would need to check, power, speed, in my view, coordination i think anthony joshua has the edge i know he's kind of he's not seen as a sweet scientist but he's a much better boxer than i think a lot of people give him credit for and i think that he's he's got better cardio and endurance he's just gone the 12 round distance several times whereas i've seen Otto Valin gas in several occasions i didn't think that he had a good chance at upsetting anthony joshua i was saying if you're gonna keep your eye on a potential upset Check out that Joseph Parker versus Deontay Wilder or Deontay Wilder versus Joseph Parker fight. Parker's got a much better chance at pulling off that upset than Otto Valin does at beating Anthony Joshua. And Joseph Parker picked up the biggest and best win of his career in a pretty dominant. I mean, Wilder didn't win too many rounds in that fight. Joseph Parker won that one by a wide wide margin and I, I couldn't feel happier for the guy I mean he's always seemed like a nice guy you know just like a good dude like he doesn't take himself too seriously he seems pretty jovial and all that and 
he always kind of climbs to the top of the mountain and then has a big loss or two and then gets knocked down a few pegs and then starts building himself back up just to lose to Joe Joyce or somebody. And then he starts climbing the mountain again. And in this case, he beat a pretty damn inactive Deontay Wilder. So when I was looking at Gili Zhang versus Joseph Parker, I was actually going to pick Joseph Parker to upset Big Bang, Gili Zhang, who's coming off of those back-to-back -back knockouts and stoppages over Joe Joyce, the juggernaut. So the way that I was coming into this one was Joe Joyce stopped Joseph Parker, Gili Zhang stopped Joe Joyce, and I was going to say Joseph Parker beats Gili Zhang. I was this close to going there because... You look at Zhili Zhang, right? I mean, earlier in his career, he's building himself up and he's got that medical scare, essentially, against Jerry Forrest where they fought to a majority draw. Zhili Zhang knocked Jerry Forrest down like three times in three rounds. And then and it was a 10-rounder. So Jerry Forrest had to battle back and win just about every round after that to be competitive on the scorecards. Again, it, it ended up resulting in a majority draw. Zhili Zhang said that he was deeply dehydrated and that he had to be hospitalized after that match. And so I don't think he's run into the same problem since. He had a very competitive and close fight with Philip Ergovich. I think that most people who were watching that thought Zhili Zhang actually beat Philip Ergovich on that Usyk versus Joshua 2 undercard. Well, they gave the unanimous decision to Philip Ergovich. I remember Zhili Zhang was just beside himself. He dropped Ergovich early in that fight and he actually dropped it with his lead right hand. Zhili Zhang is a southpaw and then Ergovich battled back and they had a very competitive fight beyond that point and again Philip Ergovich earned the decision win well then Zhili Zhang fights Joe Joyce and Joe Joyce at that time is just rolling I was actually surprised that Joe Joyce agreed to fight Zhili Zhang well Zhili Zhang basically battered Joe Joyce with a series of jabs and a series of straight left hands couldn't miss with the straight left Joe Joyce never been known for defense, but a part of his calling card was that he could take whatever shots you gave him and just march on through. Not so much the case against a puncher the caliber of Zhili Zhang. He couldn't just walk through that. Now, he didn't get dropped in that fight, but his face got battered up to where his eye closed and they stopped the fight after, I believe, the sixth round. So Zhili Zhang won that fight largely because of his left hand. In the rematch, he was winning the first and second against Joe Joyce, but Joe Joyce was moving around a lot more, trying to pick his spots. It looked very non-Joe Joyce-like, the way that he was fighting him. But Zhili Zhang, as powerful of, of a puncher as he is, he's also a bit of a craftsman. He's got a deep pedigree, and he's got a lot of you know amateur experience. It really showed against Joe Joyce. He actually kind of baited Joe Joyce with throwing a throwaway left hand to set up a lead right hook that connected beautifully on a totally exposed Joe Joyce, put him down face first, and Joe Joyce ended up barely beating the 10 count, but he was in no shape to fight. Third round knockout, Zhili Zhang wins back-to-back -back stoppages of Joe Joyce, and that just halted all that momentum that Joe Joyce had dead in its tracks, and to the victor go the spoils because Zhili Zhang is now one of the new it guys in the heavyweight division outside of that crop of, you know, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, Alexander Usyk, and formerly Deontay Wilder. But going into this Zhang versus Parker fight, I was about to pick Joseph Parker. I feel like style-wise, his movement, his speed, his ability to kind of pick up the pace and uh, win rounds through more volume, more activity, decent defense. Parker does get hit. He's got a good chin. Again, he it wasn't good enough to get him the 12, through 12 rounds against Joe Joyce. But even in that fight, he got stopped in the 11th round. And that's the only time Joseph Parker's ever been stopped. Again, he's the first guy to take Anthony Joshua the, uh, the distance. But I thought that maybe he could pick up the pace against a 40-year-old Zhili Zhang, who turns 41 in a couple of months, in May, I believe. Well, that would make for an in interesting, circular, logical, or illogical pairing. Because you would think, you know, I mean... Boxing is matchups and style based, right? So it's not necessarily the case that Zhili Zhang beats Joe Joyce, Joe Joyce beats Joseph Parker, therefore Zhili Zhang beats Joseph Parker. No, in this case, I was about to say 
Joseph Parker is a bad matchup for Gigli Zhang because he does move his head. He does jump in and out. He is not super elusive, but he's he's pretty explosive. He's pretty intelligent on which punches he lets go, especially when he gets going. There have been many fights where I think that Joseph Parker is just being way too nice to his opponent. Again, too much smiling, too much tapping gloves. He did it against uh, Derek Chisora in the first fight. Did it against um, Junior Fa when they fought. That was a very close and competitive fight. I know Parker won via unanimous decision, but uh, Junior Fa was actually very formidable against Parker in that fight. Wasn't the most crowd-pleasing fight, but it was close. And then in the, you know, Anthony Joshua fight, in the Dillian White fight, Joseph Parker sometimes, I feel, is just too nice in the ring, and he isn't throwing his meanest stuff, isn't really putting his foot on the gas. But when he does get going, he's pretty dangerous, and he's very high quality. I thought that he was just going to be a bad matchup for Zhili Zhang. But look through Joseph Parker's resume. When is the last time he's fought a southpaw? You go back into his history, go a couple years, you know, through the Joe Joyce and Derek Chisora stage or the junior Fa to Alex Leopold, Shondell Winters, go all the way back to Dillian White. Now we're talking 2018, Anthony Joshua fight, the, the Huey Fury fight, even as far back as Andy Ruiz that now we're talking 2016. Let's go all the way back to Carlos Takam earlier in 2016. That far back, so we're talking his last, he was 19-0 after beating Carlos Tackham. Uh, he's now 34-3, and so that's 37 fights, 18 fights ago. His last 18 opponents, at least, have been orthodox. So maybe somewhere behind that, you know, before that, he might have fought a southpaw. But no time in his elite slash near elite relevant part of his career. No southpaw experience. I don't care if he was sparring Tyson Fury and Tyson Fury would switch to southpaw. You go from having almost no experience against any top tier or near top tier southpaws and your first baptism into fighting southpaws is going to be against a six foot six big bang Zhili Zhang. I don't know about that one. And Joseph Parker has been susceptible to the right to like straight right hands. Deontay Wilder wasn't able to land a, a flush one, but Joseph Parker does get hit when he jumps in. Sometimes he doesn't jump way out of the pocket and he kind of sticks around. Sometimes he's got his hands kind of low as well, and he just gets splashed either after he lets go of his couple of punches or as he's jumping in to land his shots. Joseph Parker isn't that elusive. Again, Zhili Zhang is not only super powerful, not that Parker hasn't fought powerful punchers. He, again, he's fought AJ, Wilder, Joe Joyce. But Zhili Zhang, again, is a bit of a craftsman. I think that he studies the game and he's going to look at the patterns that he sees coming from Joseph Parker. I just, he's got 12 rounds to play with here. Unless Joseph Parker puts a big hurting on Zhili Zhang, Zhili Zhang is going to have some time to figure this out. And he's not a one punch or one fisted fighter. So it's not like he needs to land that straight left. Again, he's got a very concussive right hook. I don't see this. I don't see this going well for Joseph Parker, man. Like, even if he has some success in the early rounds, Zhili Zhang is usually good at boxing from distance. He'll faint, faint, then he'll throw the jab or throw a straight left hand. But he's pretty good from distance. So I don't think that Joseph Parker is just going to own that game. And Zhili Zhang is two inches taller, two additional inches in reach. So 80-inch reach compared to, I think, a 78-inch reach. Joseph Parker is going to have to continuously get in range to start firing his shots. Zhili Zhang knows how to take a step back as well. So he can measure range, measure distance. He can move a little bit. I mean, he doesn't have to be too happy-footed, but he's an intelligent fighter in there. Again, I was going to go Joseph Parker until I discovered that he hasn't fought any southpaws, and now he's going against Big Bang. So I'm not only going to go with Zhili Zhang. I, I, should, I, should I go stoppage here? I don't know. Joseph Parker, sometimes sometimes he'll go for it. Sometimes he'll kind of sit back and do too much waiting. I can see jo Joseph Parker taking Zhili Zhang the 12-round distance. Again, Joseph Parker is pretty durable. I'm going to go with Zhili Zhang, but not via stoppage. I'm going to go Joseph Parker to make it the 12-round distance against Zhang. I think it's going to be a pretty fun fight, but Zhili Zhang doesn't just let you come into his territory without paying the toll. He's he's a pretty reactive and well-reflexed fighter. So Joseph Parker is, is speedy. He's got pretty fast hands and he's coordinated, but 
Jili Zhang is no klutz in there. He's not a clumsy guy. So, yeah, I think he's going to be splashing with some significant punches against Parker. And that's going to make Parker kind of cool his heels a little bit and be a little bit measured and a little bit more willing to stay outside, tit for tat, and maybe fight. Not a total survivalist fight, but maybe not take as many chances. Look. I like the pairing with Joseph Parker and Andy Lee. They've done some very good work together. They had a great game plan in beating Deontay Wilder. They're just operating against a different type of challenge in Zhili Zhang. And even though Zhili Zhang is 40 years old, he is in a very good part of his professional career. He doesn't have a ton of wasted movement either. He's pretty economical. You know what? Well, how about this? If Zhili Zhang doesn't get Parker out of there in like the first half of the fight, is it possible that Parker then starts coming on in the second half of the fight to where Zhili Zhang is then kind of burning his gas and struggling to keep up? Maybe we get some of that, but I think that Parker is intelligent enough to make it out of the first few rounds and durable enough to make it through the second half of the fight. So I think this is going to be a pretty competitive fight, but I'm going to go Zhili Zhang to win this fight something like 116 to 112 we might even get maybe like a knockdown of joseph parker sometime in this fight i i do think that there's a good possibility that Jili jane drops him maybe with the left hand that parker doesn't see but not some maybe not put him out or put him away i think that joseph parker fights a competitive and close but Jili jane scores a clear decision win 12 round decision win against Joseph Parker. But let me know your thoughts on this one. This one is a 12 rounder because it's for what the interim WBO uh, heavyweight title. So this is a 12 rounder, not a 10 rounder. And it's again, a very good undercard fight. This uh, fight card also features Ray Vargas defending his WBC 126 featherweight title against Nick Ball, who just picked up an, an impressive win over Isaac Dog Bay not too long ago. So yeah, this again is going to uh, take place on that Anthony Joshua versus Francis Ngannou heavyweight uh, 10 rounder in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, who do you have winning this? Jili Zhang versus Joseph Parker and how? And depending on who wins the fight, what's next for that fighter? I think that the belts are going to be tied up at least in the immediate future because we've got that battle for undisputed between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. There's pro there's probably going to be, well, there might be a rematch. I know there's a rematch clause. We'll see depending on how the first fight plays out. If it does in fact play out on the timetable that the Saudis wanted to take place, given Tyson Fury's cut. I mean, I, I read that he's, you know, recovering well and he's back in training and all that. But if that fight goes down, I think that how it results and the style of fight that takes place is going to determine whether they actually have a rematch. But even if they have the rematch, I think the, the, that the titles might get splintered because you've had Philip Ergovich as like the IBF interim champ, you know, in waiting for his shot for a long time. And now you've got uh, Joe Joyce, who was the WBO interim title uh, champ for a while. And then that was taken by Zhili Zhang. Now that interim status is up for grabs here. So we'll see if either one of these guys get to fight for an actual title after winning this fight between Zhang and Parker. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this one in the comments. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are into the fight talk. I'm Woog. Thanks for tuning in.